Are you going to see Oppenheimer and then Barbie? Or Barbie, <laughs> or then, Barbie and then Oppenheimer? That's what we're debating. Which the order? I don't know. I think first Oppenheimer one because it fits better in my weekend. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's obvious. Um, I have to work that weekend, so... We're okay. <laughs> going to, to the after party. Um, like you recently proved with Across the Spider-Verse, you are not interested in doing a, a sequel just for, for the sake of it. So instead you are focused in expanding expanding universe, offering new new experiences to, to the audience. So in the case of the after party, and in particular in, in this season, what were you seeking to, to achieve, the, the three of you? Well, I think one thing that was really fun uh, about this season is that we could go in with a confidence that people were going to follow along with each episode being in its own style and its own genre and feeling like its own individual movie. And so we really pushed it more this season and the, and the places that we go style wise, uh, even costume wise, the camera wise, and the whole thing is so much more than we did the first season. And I think it, that, and it, and I think it really worked. Uh, and so I think it's, it's you know building on what we did the first season, but it's uh, but it's um, a bigger and more ambitious than than the first one. And how was it to put together this puzzle that has so many pieces, even more than than in the previous season? So I mean, what comes first uh, as the foundation, the mind movies, the mystery itself, the characters, or is it a mix of, of everything? It really goes back and forth. They all kind of inform each other. Uh, and and yes, we <clears throat> added more characters. It's a, it's also more episodes in season two, which is is infinitely more difficult. It is, is a, <laughs> a graph that accelerates very quickly. Uh, but it it also it makes it more fun because you're you have more opportunity for uh, more twists and turns, more red herrings, uh, more surprises, and more emotional connections between the characters. Right, and you start with you know, the murder and figuring out who the killer is and why they did what they did and how we can cover it up. Then you're figuring out what characters you'd want to tell in this story. And then after that, you figure out what genre those characters would see themselves as and how they would and how they would go through the world envisioning themselves. And then you adjust based on like, OK, this genre maybe is a little too close to this other genre. So what if they saw themselves this way? And then you change their character to fit that genre a little bit. And there's a ripple effect. And they go back and forth and back and forth. It's very complicated. And each episode is intertwined with all the other episodes. So writing it is one of the most complicated things uh, that we've ever <laughs> had what, to do. What I find interesting is, is that every episode is a character study. Right. And that you're talking about like how a character presents themselves to you and who that person is underneath. What secrets do they have apart from murder? <laughs> because <laughs> right. every character is withholding something and something is driving them. You like you have to decide like who murdered somebody, but right. then also like you have to come up with like eight okay. other things that right. is are driving people that matter. Every exactly. character has to have a motive <laughs> to be the murderer, but that is not the only thing that's revealed. Right. That's There's it. an emotional story. Yeah. And the the best thing about the show is that you start an episode thinking, oh, I, I see this character one way, and then you finish the episode seeing them in a totally different way and empathizing with them and and going, man, I hope they're not the killer because I really like them. Uh, but someone has to be. And, and in this season, I think that you go even farther when, when taking some genres. I think that they are not anymore genres. They are more like concrete styles of, of movies like this, Jane Austen, uh, the Hitchcockian style, Wes Anderson style too. So how do you avoid to avoid to feel too derivative when exploring these tropes of these movies and, and styles? Yes, that's a great question. I think you never want to veer into parody where you're like, oh, this is that shot from this movie. You want to take the essence of the vibe of, you know, the style of filmmaking uh, that <clears throat> that it, that a person sees themselves as, and then do an original piece uh, using that type of language. I think anytime you're just doing a reference, or or you know trying to say like, oh, isn't this like that other thing that you've seen? Then it doesn't work. It only works 
if you're telling a fully original story and using the cinematic tools and the language of those things. So we were very, like, very hardcore about like, ah, that's too much like an actual thing that we've seen, and we don't want it. We can't. This is not. Uh, this is not a spoof. This is its own thing.